with focus on memory in Jeannie's Loka in the city of Glasgow, Scotland, and the city-state of Singapore, Memory Laundered is a work in progress which explores the fragmented nature of rapture utopian visions within its place. An homage to utilitarian domestic objects that seeks to reinterpret their origin and purpose, and by doing so, revive their technological trajectory. The work emerged from a study exploring the nature of high-density dwelling in Glasgow, expressed in the form of the Victorian tenements and the mid-20th century tower block. It utilizes partial and autobiographical approaches to layered and complex content, drawing in both archive and anecdote to reassert the essence of that which has been lost or forgotten, and that which has been recovered or reasserted. Focus is currently how such artifacts resonate within contemporary ways of living, with emphasis on the rituals of everyday life and how directly they are intertwined with spatial memories, explicit, implied or fading. It asked how we, through uncovering the memory of the collage assembly of such scenographies, might develop resilient form and construct new memories via the close exploration of two useful, prosaic, but increasingly skaker remnants of the material culture once abundant in the context of Northwest Europe and Southeast Asia. Our points of reference are utilitarian, emblematic devices used in the laundering of clothes and fabric in high-density housing, namely the pulley, a mechanical system of blocks, laths, sash cords and lift frames found attached to the kitchen ceilings of the Victorian tenements in Glasgow, and Teco, originally a bamboo clothes drying pole socket mounted on the exteriors of early examples of housing development board buildings in Singapore. The work sits somewhere between heritage, archive and play studies and seeks to reconcile dramatic changes to urban context by employing the agency of symbolic objects. A longer term, object-centered critique of the economics and politics of placemaking as intended. The project also points to the relationship between prior and current integration of intangible climatic elements of contrasting scale, how our selected objects were created to harness these, and how they embody past experiences and potentially lead to new narratives. We seek to augment readings of place, architecture and interiors, not only through once ubiquitous utilitarian objects, but also through performed actions, technological developments, climatic affordances and the transformation of laundry practices. The pulley and the teco are objects that refer to household effects and translate to ordinary things made for daily use. They have been made to facilitate and accelerate the drying and airing of clothes. With this as a starting point, we place emphasis on the production of their creation and the diagnostic of their component parts. Simultaneously, we consider their symbiotic relationships to their respective built environments or immediate context, acknowledging their original role, their new aesthetic and technological potential. The pulley system was first introduced in Britain in the Victorian era. 
The mechanism was ideally suited to the high ceiling kitchens of tenements typically found in cities such as Glasgow. During this time, kitchens were considered incomplete without a closed area of this type. The cast iron leaf frames were available in a range of colors and sizes and carried a structure of usually redwood pine laths in typical distributions of four to eight. The kitchen possessed ritualistic qualities and represented the core of the household, where the family was spending most of the time. The sense of domesticity and the cozy atmosphere brought together the feeling of home. In most apartments, the kitchen was no more than a pot hanging in the fireplace. But in a Glaswegian tenement, the kitchen was probably the most important room where all this specialized domestic work, women's work, took place. The location of the pulley, following the logic of special occupancy and its functionality drawing on the dynamics of rising warm air from the fireplace and the cooking raids, delivering the end point of the laundering process. The relationship and interdependence between senses is important, with the kitchen transformed into a multi-sensory context, able to capture the essence of domestic identities, cultural identities, and habits. Exploring through the interview process the technologies of washing, drying and ironing, the soaps and detergents, we seek to understand the relationship of the past identity of the pulley and define a new interpretation. The work is also supplemented by our existing knowledge and experience in using the system and allowed us to pay attention to all function. Smell and texture are relevant, but freshness is an essence and state of mind. In the text Home Truths, an interview comments on the diptych of visual and olfactory experience. She says, I can smell cleanless. It is inevitable. For us, this offers a fresh perspective on exploratory reproduction of the object. What we will see in the following section is how the beauty of a useful object can only be explained in terms of its purpose. Our attempt to reconstruct the pulley followed narratives in relation to cleaning and laundering processes and also as a device to share memories and represent new possibilities for it. We suggest new materials but not from a stylistic point of view and proceeded to rebuild in order to echo aspects of domesticity and previous attributes. While the Victorians tried to find innovative ways to incorporate technologies that would facilitate their everyday domestic lives, we choose to re-examine utility. The visual presentation of the objects captures motion in detail. Moving from image to object, for this presentation we depict a connection between function and object. Showing the pulley as decorative objects, it may be viewed as beautiful. Its form is retained, simple, with eight main components. However, testing and coordinating colors, patterns and textures, we aim to make her embellish it. To understand the essence of the object, it was newly sketched and 3D printed for testing. Deceptively visually simple, the curves and the apertures were challenging to define. The act of rendering and understanding the technical process facilitated the specification of materials to select sustainable methodologies and textual and detail manipulation. The process helped us to question historical and contextual meanings and make new objects that would allow us to speculate about future applications. Working practically with materials, 
offered a more powerful procedure of discovery. This was partly informed by an interest in accessible, rapid and inexpensive methods of one-off fabrication. For this project, we view the Puli as a traditional embodiment of minimal decoration and functionality and offer alternative readings and interactions. Here we would also like to say more about the crafting process of the pulley. In principle, our process was informed by digital representations of both objects and digital crafting. Becoming the craft persons ourselves, we analyzed formed colors and materiality. In some instances, this was a repetitive process, however it required detailing and acknowledgement of the challenges. For example, material strength and what level of loading might cause the formerly metal components to fail. Shuchi Yanagi argues that machine produce artifacts that are called in salo, removing the hand skills or the joy from the creator. On the other hand, Anderson and Wenthal don't see a division between analog and digital. In contrary, they view digital fabrication as an enhancement of space, body and objects and an opportunity for interdisciplinary research. In our case, it is rather a difference of perspective. The project captures an ongoing process of experimentation through which we salvage these examples of domestic objects, celebrating their existence and reframing their beauty. Reaching for engineering and interacting detailing, we represent the laundry as an assembly of different components textile, sound, smell, screens, and motion, each of which has a different meaning in the research, but together they constitute an integrated artifact. In conversation with experts, we are designing an olfactory and interactive experience. Historically gendered domestic tasks may be highlighted via algorithmic interpretation of live dynamic inputs or data sets which is impacting on the motion of the pulley. In this state of imaginative creation, we animate a familiar object to represent new realities and tell new stories. They may be unable to help inform their user of the way they carry through phased elimination. The artifact could reveal the convention of cleanliness. Through the physical construction of the pulley, we communicate the deep significance that the object holds and its role as a silent, discrete element within an interior. We document and reflect on crafting processes as well as material experiences. Finally, the work investigates the connection between objects, their histories and their cultural relevance as part of collective identity. Presenting familiar everyday objects through a new lens in order to question domestic identities, curation of the artifact and the consequences of material culture for a more profound understanding of what we are.